Hello friends. So today we will discuss about how to write an effective essay. Essay is one of the topic which is highly important and it is very important to score good marks in essay. You can easily see scorecards of different toppers and how much difference an essay marks can make. Uh, you will realize while well, you will give mains examination and this is one of the most dicey paper and in this paper you can generate a difference of 50 to 60 marks with an effective strategy uh, students score uh, marks like 80 85 also and students also score uh, more than 140 more than 150 marks as well so this uh, much difference you can generate by writing an effective essay so it is very important to first analyze what an effective essay looks like. Uh, this uh, I will tell based on my own strategy uh, by using that I had scored 138 marks and one time I had also scored 141 in the essay, which is considered good. So I will share my strategy, what I used to uh, do for this paper. So let's start the topic. First of all, what are the components of essay? Just like your GS answers. GS answers has intro, body and conclusion. Same goes for essay. However, here you have to write your essay in 1000 to 1200 words. So your introduction will range from one page to one and a half page. It should range between one page to one and a half page. Not more than that. Not too short, not too long. Between that you can write. Some uh, try to give uh, paragraphs in introduction itself some write um, in one go without changing paragraphs in introduction there is both type of style which you can adopt while writing introduction the basic thing is that if you have written any book in the beginning there is preface in preface you read that what I am going to read in the book itself. So it gives a kind of bird's eye view. You get a kind of summary. So this you have to do in your introduction as well. The more catchy your introduction will be, the more examiner will uh, try to read your essay with that much focus um, if he will get impressed with your introduction your introduction is very very important if someone has disliked your introduction itself it is a high probability that he or she will not read your essay properly uh, and this is subjective nature of paper and these things do happen so your introduction should be catchy it should give bird's eye view and it should be also connected to the topic why i'm saying this we are tend to um, be thinking about anecdotes and we are uh, we tend to think about writing poems we tend to uh, write quotes but writing all these is fine is your quote connected to the topic i will uh, take one or two essay topics of upsc previous year to make you understand that if you are writing anecdote it should be first precise it should not go beyond five to six lines. An anecdote should not be of one or one and a half pages. It should be short and it should be connected to the topic. If you don't have any quotes, if you don't have any poems, don't worry. You can give current context. You can simply define the topic. The more important thing is to stick to the demand of the essay paper, essay topic. If you are not writing what is given in the topic, you will not get any marks for the same. Second is body. So body is the major chunk of your essay. Say for example, if you are writing 10 pages, around 7 pages, you will write body. In body, you have to analyze different dimensions and it should not be abrupt. Uh, say for example, you are writing about economic dimension and you want to now discuss about environmental dimension. So the transition should be very subtle. There should not be any jerk in essay. Flow is very, very important component of essay. In Hindi, we say Nibandh. Nibandh means having no foundation, having no bounds. So it should flow like a river. 
and uh, that is why there should be subtle transition between one dimension to another dimension uh, so this is one of the component second is that your analysis should be in depth since uh, they are telling you to write on a topic 1200 words so they demand an in-depth analysis from you of that particular topic it is not like gs that you will write 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 if you are analyzing a dimension it should be proper it should be in depth and uh, uh, it should cover uh, the topic in totem there should be substantiation uh, substantiation there should be examples there should be quotes there should be data whatever you have you have to utilize all these things so that your analysis is in depth so you have to keep in mind all these things now uh, coming to conclusion part conclusion as you write in uh, inter, uh, in gs answers as well it should be something which is optimistic in approach it should give a ray of hope even if uh, some essay is related to uh, something which is not so uh, positive thing it, it is telling about some problem caste system patriarchy you have to give a ray of hope you have to be optimistic in your conclusion and secondly you also need to summarize whatever you have written in the whole essay it it uh, can also range from one page to one and a half page you have to write conclusion in that now coming to uh, uh, give you tips what you should remember while writing the essay first i am uh, always telling that you have to stick to the topic you cannot write whatever you want you have to write whatever is asked in the essay topic second is understanding the topic in whole not in parts what i mean by this is uh, if someone um, i i will make you understand through this patriarchy is the best at least noticed here the most significant structure what i mean by this uh, substantiating your arguments and doing in-depth analysis what i said earlier as well not stretching a single dimension but trying to analyze different different dimension different different uh, things um, so that you give a multi-dimensional multi-faceted analysis uh, in your essay giving contemporary context to your essays what uh, what i mean by this uh, that is giving current examples giving contemporary context so that if someone is reading he or she can connect with your examples connect with your arguments if you will write something which of different uh, of very old phases he or she may not be aware about that okay so you have to give contemporary examples contemporary context those examples those things will be appreciated more not using technical jargons of your optional too many times if you are from sociology background and you are writing so many jargons devi dasi dichotomy uh, you are writing about uh, um, sanskritization if you are doing too much of this remember the one um, who is checking your copy is not from sociology background not from political science and international relations background you have to be generalistic in approach you have to be very simple you don't have to use uh, sashi tharoor kind of english but you have to uh, have a good decent kind of for a formal kind of vocabulary uh, keep your essay interesting what what i mean by that uh, because essay is something which is big and you have to attract attention of examiner so you can be a little bit interesting i will explain how you can be from the uh, topic of previous year so let's take an example patriarchy is the least noticed yet the most significant structure of social inequality first thing is patriarchy is least noticed it is existing in the society but nobody is giving much heed to it it has become normalized yet the most significant structure of social inequality that is it is universal it is entrenched in every class it is entrenched in even lower middle higher uh, it is entrenched in urban area it is entrenched in village area so it is one of the most significant structure of social inequality now you don't have to write um, essay on patriarchy or you don't have to write essay on um, social inequality you have to read this in totem uh, they are giving a type of paradox so you have to show a kind of paradox that um, a patriarchal social inequality is there 
but the scene is something which is common which is uh, uh, which is not something bad which is not considered as inequality say for example beauty of women or objectific uh, objectification of women through media or through magazines it's being normalized it is not seen as something which is part of uh, an unequal stratified mindset or it is part of patriarchy or uh, doing household work is something which is uh, seen as perfectly natural thing or or thing which is um, allocated to women but it is part of patriarchy but uh, it is not seen as something which is which is bad which is inequal so in kind of paradoxical relation you have to show you can give simple anecdote that uh, someone is three uh, a family of three are sitting and watching a tv and um, suddenly uh, something comes some advertisement comes and and one of uh, the adult member of family says uh, that uh, women used to cry by seeing some advertisement or normalizing these kinds of things and you can give a character name and uh, what is happening there so such kind of story is showing a paradox uh, that uh, you are uh, giving a kind of uh, uh, a kind of characteristic to women and it is perfectly normal you can showcase any current contemporary example uh, where patriarchy happened but it was seen as something normal pink is for girl this is also part of patriarchy now you would have also observed that certain women uh, do leave their job because they also feel guilty uh, of not fulfilling the roles of women why it happens because they are socialized in this particular society and it is there in head that i have to take care of child i have to take care of home if they are not doing so there was example of a judge that she left job because of that she used to feel that she is uh, doing something bad she used to feel guilty so in paradoxical nature you have to write your essay if you uh, many of my friends wrote this essay thinking that i am from sociology background and they wrote, uh, wrote 13 pages on patriarchy and they got less than 110 marks so you have to stick to the topic second example i will um, take is life is long journey between human being and being human no what what does it tell so you see we all are born as human but there are some human values which we develop through our life experiences let's take an example there is a children and when he is born he doesn't know that what is venomous what is dangerous he goes behind a snake he wants to catch that snake he is seeing lizard he is trying to catch lizard so he do not have this kind of um, understanding that what is venomous what is good what is bad he understands that through role playing in family he understands what is the role of father what is mother he used to play like uh, acting as mom and dad in the childhood so we learn through that through school we learn camaraderie we learn team uh, team playing what is the uh, how to act in a company so these things we learn punctuality so many things we learn when we go to hostel we learn how to sustain yourself individually uh, when we marry we learn a lot from our better half uh, when we um, give birth to child we learn a lot of things kindness empathy so through our this process of life a long journey of life you um, transit from human being to being human it it's a lifelong process when you retire you learn lot many other things so this way this is a whole journey however you have to also show some kind of uh, 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 aberration what happens that some people become being human but society plays a vital role in it if some persons are not uh, from a sound background uh, if they are not belonging to uh, an area where they are not provided basic necessity they may so deviant behavior and they may not um, act as being human or they may not 
get socialized properly and it leads to behavior which is uh, not human uh, committing crimes etc so this also you can showcase and then you can in conclusion you can showcase how like personality development takes place and how government is doing the same how society can play a role how uh, being a role model uh, someone can play a role you can bring Swami Vivekananda here he had talked uh, at length about this Mahatma Gandhi his journey of experiences my experiment with truth is what he had showcased how he changed from human being to being human so in this way you have to write your essay what you understood from this you have to be simple you have to be crisp you have to be precise your paragraph uh, size should be even even these things get noticed you are writing one paragraph of seven lines one paragraph of three lines one paragraph of two lines one paragraph of one page it gives a very bad impression small things matters do small things with perfection you will get good bigger things in life small things matters you should not avoid or um, think that these are very small things these things matters a lot uh, you cannot just simply uh, write in a bad handwriting or overdo underlining if you are doing underline it should not be more than four to five underlines if you are underlining is m r like this if you are doing and uh, then the value of underline gets vanished so you have to understand all these things while writing essay i hope this video will help you i will also showcase uh, with more such essays and more such tips and tricks there are a lot many things brainstorming how to do that uh, and there are certain tools which you can utilize so that I will tell you in upcoming video lectures. Thank you so much.